Uh, the military is now deploying additional forces to support the coronavirus response. Military hospital ships are already being put to use to help alleviate the stress on hospitals. Yeah, U.S. defense official tells CNN the military is preparing 15 Army task forces designed to support urban area hospitals dealing with the pandemic. Uh, General Terrence uh, O'Shaughnessy is with us. He's a commander of North American Aerospace Defense Command and U.S. Northern Command. Good morning to you. Uh, good, morning. Uh, good morning, and thanks for the uh, opportunity to talk about some of the great work our folks are doing. General, good morning to you. Victor Blackwell here. Let me start here. You called this a war. And you talked about the use of medical weapons. Now, we've seen Athena Jones there outside the Javits Center, uh, the USNS Comfort there in New York as well. Give us a broader picture of how the military will be assisting in this fight and how broadly we could see this uh, across the country. Well, thanks for that. Uh, our our Commander-in-Chief has declared uh, a war on COVID-19, and we're a huge part of that, obviously. And we're treating this as a, as a large military campaign. As you mentioned, we have the Comfort in New York City. We have the Mercy on the other coast. Uh, we also have Army Expeditionary Units, uh, also to the, to the Javits Center you were just highlighting as an example, but also to Seattle. We have another Navy unit down in Jackson, or out of Jacksonville that went to New Orleans and Dallas. And why I say all that is it really highlights this is a whole-of-nation approach. Well, New York City is, a, is clearly a, a very uh, serious situation. We have to look all across the nation, bring the capability that we have in the, in the U.S. Uh, Department of Defense, whether it be medical, logistics, et cetera, and make sure that's available for our nation at this time of need. I wanted to ask you, you just mentioned the comforts in New York City, the mercy is in L.A. There are reports that there are only 20, 22 maybe uh, people on uh, one of those ships. They can house actually a thousand um, in terms of patients. Can you give us an update on the status of those ships and, and any logistical problems, perhaps, uh, that are keeping more patients from being loaded there? Right. So we're plugging into the broader uh, New York City uh, hospital uh, dynamic, if you will. Uh, we've been working closely with the New York City officials, the state officials, to really just be another hospital that's available for them. And what we're, we're providing the full spectrum of capability. And the way we've looked at this is we want to be able to provide, no kidding, the, the highest end capability. So whether it's an automobile accident, a gunshot wound, trauma type events that might happen, we make that available for them to come to the comfort. The ambulances can come right to the comfort. Uh, they'll be taken into the comfort, taken care of. We have 11 operating rooms. We have 80 ICU units there. They're prepared to handle the highest end trauma victims. Simultaneously, we also have at the Javits Center, we have uh, a lower end capability, lower acuity, and we can bring COVID patients there. They can be COVID convalescents, but we also, we, we just recently, in fact, it will be IOC today, we're bringing in 48 ICU beds in there as well, so we can take a, a higher end uh, COVID patient as well. So the, the concept here is we're going high end all the way to, to the lower end medical needs, and we're plugging into the New York City and the New York State uh, broader system and we're open for business. We're ready for them to bring in the patients uh, even at a higher level. Uh, and we, we want to be part of a relief valve that we know New York needs right now. So you've talked about how the military will be helping um, localities and medical professionals. Uh, how will the military protect its own? We know that um, often quarters are close and sometimes the job requires um, personal interaction. So how will you prioritize the social distancing and the protection of, of, of the service members? Right, so I'll break down into two different areas. One is our medical professionals are out there just doing uh, heroic work, just like so many civilian health workers out there. Uh, we're focused on having the right PPE or personal protective equipment, making sure they're providing uh, the right protocols, and, and they all have the training, they're ready to go, they're in the fight right now, and that'll continue. But simultaneously, it's important to note that U.S. NORTHCOM and NORAD have the mission of defending our homeland, and we can't stop during the COVID virus, and so we've taken great measures to ensure our ability to defend our great nations. And I'll use an example of right now as we speak, I have a crew up in Cheyenne Mountain, originally designed for a nuclear warfare, uh, 1,800 feet of granite ventilation systems. We've isolated crews up there, taken away from their families. They're staying there. We're, we're feeding them. We're, we're building them. Uh, and they're doing their mission there, completely isolated from the COVID environment. So those are the types of things we're doing just to ensure that we can maintain our ability to defend our nation 
while simultaneously bringing a lot to bear in the whole of America approach to get after this COVID-19. Commander, is there a different psychology for military members who are serving here at home in the midst of a fight like this with coronavirus as opposed to in a foreign land? Uh, there is. You know, we, we've all been all over the world doing uh, amazing things for our country. But it, there's, a, there's a sacred responsibility to defend our homeland right here. Uh, and so it does, it really gets you right in the heart uh, that we're able to be a, a part of this response, this whole of America response, uh, while simultaneously maintaining our ability to defend our nation. Nobody's going to take advantage of any vulnerabilities. We're ready, we're prepared, and we're part of the whole of America response. So, General, the uh, now former commander of the USS uh, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, Captain Brett Crozier, was removed for exercising, as the acting secretary of the Navy said, uh, poor judgment. He wrote and released a COVID-19 uh, memo talking about it spreading on the aircraft carrier. He said, in part, removing the majority of personnel from a deployed U.S. nuclear aircraft carrier and isolating them for two weeks may seem like an extraordinary measure as this spreads. Uh, he goes on to say that keeping over 4,000 young men and women on board the TR is an unnecessary risk and breaks faith with the sailors entrusted to our care. He released no classified information, no evidence that he sent it to the media. What was the poor judgment here? Do you think he did something wrong? Well, of course, I'll leave that to the Navy channels. Uh, they think they're handling the situation uh, quite well. But what I will say is, as a commander myself, uh, we, we, we just take an incredible responsibility of taking care of our airmen, our soldiers, our, our sailors, our Marines that are under our charge. Uh, and so across our, our Department of Defense, what you see is commanders trying to do the right thing uh, and take care of the people while getting the mission done. Uh, in this particular case, uh, there were some, some things that weren't quite following the chain of command whilst uh, uh, involved in this. And I think the Navy's uh, uh, taken uh, the right actions and, and are, are handling the situation appropriately. Commander Terrence O'Shaughnessy, uh, we just want to say thank you so much to you and to all the military members out there for your service, for all that you're doing to take care of this country. Take good care, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.